Hey, scientists! Hey, Jen! <laughs> Hi, friends. It's nice to see you. How are you today? Pretty good? Good. Uh, you ready for a science class? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, let's get ready for science class. We have the whiteboard. It's ready for us. Now, uh, oh, before we start, do you notice we have a square of paper here? Today it's green. I put that up to color code the videos because sometimes the videos all look the same on the menu. And I thought that way, if you're looking for one, then you remember what color that, that um, square was, then you'll be able to just look for that. And that'll be a different color for each video. I think that's pretty smart. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right, so friends, uh, last time we were talking about life cycles, we talked about the butterfly life cycle. There's a big word that goes with that life cycle. That word is holometabolis. Can you say holometabolis? Holometabolis. <laughs> Good, I love hearing you say that. Holometabolis means whole change. Let's put that word up here. Uh, we can see the word. It's a really big one. Holo. <laughs> it's like in Zootopia when the sloth takes too long. Uh, raise your hand if you know the movies, what I'm talking about. That was a fun memory. Thank you, Rex, for reminding me. Um, holo metabolis. Can you see that on the screen? I hope so. Uh, holo means whole, and metabolis or metab means change. And the reason it's a whole change, remember, it goes from egg. You remember the song. We're not going to get to the song yet. We have to draw it up first. Okay, here we go. Life cycles always start as an egg, at least for animals. I'm sure there's exceptions, but moving on. Egg is right here, and out of the egg hatches a, what comes out? Larva. That's right. Good job. Larva. Now, these larvae are tiny because they had to fit inside of that egg. Sometimes they eat their egg because that's good stuff. That larva. This one's a butterfly. So uh, it, we know it looks like a caterpillar when it's a larva. Even though that's a butterfly right there. This is a butterfly right there. It's not an octopus, right? That's not a cat. That's a butterfly. It's just a baby butterfly. A larva. And we call that a caterpillar. Now that larva eats and eats and eats until it's eaten so much that it doesn't fit in its skin anymore. Oh, I can't wait for that episode. Stay tuned for the molting episode. Once it can't fit in its skin, it has to break out and that's molting. Can you say molting? Molting. Thank you. And after it molts, it grows one whole size. Let's draw that up here. Here it comes. Oh my gosh, that was a huge growth. All right, and then it eats some more and eats and eats and eats until it needs to molt again. And it keeps doing that. Good job, larva. It keeps doing that until that larva is so big. Oh my gosh, it's huge. It doesn't need to eat anymore. That is big enough, but it's the wrong shape. So that larva needs to change. And while it's changing, we call it a pupa. Can you say pupa? <laughs> Thank you. So here we have our egg. Next comes the larva. And when that larva is ready to change, we call it a pupa. I'm going to draw that pupa. Pupa always look weird. I don't know if I'm all that great at drawing pupa, but I practice and I enjoy it, so that's cool. I always make it look like an acorn, but whatever. That's just my pupa. Maybe you could draw a better pupa. I'd be interested in seeing yours. Inside this pupa is the animal. It's a, this pupa, we call it a cocoon. Here's a fun one. So we call it a cocoon or a chrysalis. Now, you know, butterflies and moths are really similar. They're in the same group, Lepidoptera. Remember that? Can you say Lepidoptera? Lepidoptera. <laughs> I love you. you say that. Thank you. Lepidopterans are moths and butterflies. Now, get this. The pupa for a moth is called a cocoon, and a pupa for a butterfly is called a chrysalis, <laughs> right? That blew my mind when I learned that. I always thought they were just all interchangeable, but they always have really specific words in entomology, so fun. So here we have our egg. The larva grows and grows and grows until it's ready to change. It goes, it creates a chrysalis or a cocoon, a pupil case, a puparium. Oh my gosh, those are four words for the same thing. I should do a whole episode just on the Pupa, the pupa, puparium, cocoon, and chrysalis. 
So inside here is our larva, it's busy changing. And when it's all done changing, it comes out as an adult. Can you say adult? Adult. Yeah, yeah, adult. And we know about that. Oh, I hope I left enough room for our other life cycle. I better be careful. I'm gonna squeeze our adult over here. Oh, and then I went way too high. Let me wipe that down a little bit. We gotta edit that. All right, here we go. I'm gonna put it in a better place. Keep that handy. All right, here we go. There we go. Okay, now, now what we're making is a butterfly and we have an adult butterfly now so we can sing the body part song. These guys have the same body parts, but they're faster to draw just as a fast oval. But are you ready to sing the body part song as we draw the, draw the butterfly? Okay, here we go. Sing with me now, it goes. Head, thorax, abdomen. <laughs> Good job. We always love hearing that. All right, let's add the rings onto the abdomen so we know about that. And then what's missing on our head? Any ideas what's missing on the head? Antenna, that's always the first. Butterfly antenna have a little ball at the end. They're adorable, they're always like that. And then their eyes, yeah, get their eyes on there. And their mouth is a swirly tube. Oh, butterflies are so magical. Let's make a swirly tube, it's all right. They're cuter than I can draw, that's for sure. All right, now one of the biggest features that butterflies have that I'm missing here are the wings. But isn't that interesting? If we look at a butterfly body, how it looks like a lot of other insects. It could be a dragonfly, or I could even make this into an earwig pretty easily. All insects have those three body parts just in different shapes. Ah, oh, it's so interesting. Can't wait for more episodes. All right, so I better put those wings on. Is it bothering you that we don't have the wings on yet? It's good to practice that. See if you can push through. All right, let's get those wings on here. Here they come. I like to go big with my butterfly wings, but I don't usually make them the same on both sides. That's something I have a hard time with, that symmetry. Yep, not very symm symmetrical, that's all right. And then I like to decorate with hearts and stars. Because why not? Now we know when that butterfly is done, Eclosing, remember that word, eclose. Can you say eclose? Eclose. <laughs> Thank you. Eclose means to leave a small room. Oh. And so when the butterfly eclosis from its puparium, oh, I just love that etymology. Now it eclose and it's ready to start a family now. So it's gonna find another butterfly and mix ingredients. Say, hey, hey, I wanna start a, a family. Do you wanna start a family? Oh, I'd love to start a family. And then they mix ingredients and then now they can put this egg out that's ready to start the next life cycle. Now, I have some friends that I've been seeing for a couple of years now. They're in the first grade now. They were in the kinder kindergarten last year who insist that I include the ghost part of this life cycle. It's kind of a sensitive area and uh, it's important that we're able to talk about this in science, but I like to approach it sensitively and a little gently if I can, because it's hard. So when this life cycle, which is how life goes around, starts out with an egg and then we have the larva, the pupa and adult. And sometimes people are confused. They think that that adult turns into an egg. That's not what happens. The adult can make the egg, make lots of eggs. But then when the adult's done making all the eggs they were gonna make, then they're all done and they turn into a ghost butterfly. And that's what kids like to have me draw that up. Let's see, my ghost, my ghost insect is usually they like draw this. It blurry so it looks like it. Okay, yeah. thank you, that's good feedback. Only its wings are blurry? That's kind of sad, but it's okay. It's just how it goes. But then it didn't die. It just, it's just its win wings died. <laughs> yeah, we could do a whole series on that. All right, so that's what happens to that business after they've made their egg business. Now, this is the holometabolist life cycle. You ready to sing that song? I love that song. It's a good one. Get your snappers ready now. It goes, egg. Larva, pupa, adult. That's right. Egg, larva, pupa, adult. Let's sing it. Egg, larva, pupa, adult. One more time. Egg, larva, pupa, adult. <laughs> thanks, friends. Uh, thanks for indulging me. It's such a silly song, but we have so much fun with it. All right, so this is our holometabolist life cycle. That's, a lot of insects do this. Butterflies and moths do this. Also flies do this. Baby flies don't look like grown-ups. They look like larvae and they're called maggots. Uh, baby, who was I just thinking of? 
Oh, uh, why can't I think of that? The butterfly. Oh, beetles. Beetles go through this life cycle as well. In fact, we should have talk about baby ladybugs. Baby ladybugs look like monsters, and people think they should kill them until they realize it's not a monster. It's a baby ladybug. They look so different from their grown-ups. A lot of time, if you find something creepy, crawly outside, if it has six legs, that's three on either side. If it has six legs, it's an insect. And if it's weird looking and you can't recognize it, it's probably a baby insect, a baby from a holometabolist type of insect where it just doesn't look normal because baby beetles don't look like grown-up beetles, that's for sure. And baby flies don't look like grown-up flies, just like baby butterflies don't look like grown-up butterflies. Get my point? Holometabolist life cycle, whole change. All right, friends, we're only halfway done. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because there's another type of life cycle that insects have. <laughs> I don't know. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. I have my pen. This life cycle is different. The babies come out, they always start with an egg. Let's start with our egg. They always come out of their egg, but these babies come out of the egg looking just like the grown-up. Yeah, so like here, this does not look like a grown-up butterfly, but in a, this other life cycle, they look just like the grown-up. Okay, let me tell you the name of this life cycle. Are you ready? Okay, this one over here is holometabolist. This one has the name Hemimetabolus. Can you say hemimetabolus? Hemimetabolus. Hemimetabolus. It's one of the best words to say. I feel like it's almost a, a medicine for your mouth because your lips get to do so much fun bouncing around. Hemimetabolus. Hemimetabolus. You should say it again. Hemimetabolus. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> okay, maybe if you don't want to say it again. Hemimetabolus. Let me write it up here. It's another big word. It's uh, also written just like it sounds, so we can sound it out. Hemi metabolus. Holy mackerel! All right, hemi metabolus. Now a hemi, hemi. The before we had whole low, so that meant whole change. Hemi means half, half change. These guys only change halfway. They come out looking just like they're grown up, but they're too small. So we're gonna start out with a praying mantis because I love praying mantises. Let's see, we have a baby praying mantis here. Oh, it's probably too small for you to see on TV yet, on the screen, but that's okay. We'll make them bigger and we'll have printable or a copy and look that you can see. Baby mantis. Now, I got news for you. We've got new words coming up. Over here, out of the egg came a larva. That larva doesn't look anything like the grown up. But that's not the case here. What came out of the egg looks just like the grown-up, so it's not a larva. It's a new word. You ready for this word? Mm -hmm. This out of the egg came a nymph. Can you say that? Nymph. Nymph. Nymph is a weird word to say because you have the m sound and the f sound right next to each other. And you kind of have to practice it a couple of times. It doesn't feel right to me. I have to practice it a few times just to get used to it. Nymph. 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 A nymph is a small version of something. Are you a nymph? I think you might be a nymph human. We'll talk more about that in a second. So here we have this tiny praying mantis that you probably can't see. Let's get it bigger. It eats, it does the same process. It eats and then it grows until it needs to break out of its shell. And then it grows a whole size bigger. Out we go, this nymph. Ah, that's bigger. Oh, it looks like its antenna got broken off the tip. That happens a lot though. There we go. So here we have our first size nymph and then it grows into the second size. Those sizes are called instars. We'll talk about that more on a, the molting episode, but you can say instar for now. Oh yeah, I heard it, instar. So here we have our egg, and it hatches into a nymph, and that nymph molts into a bunch of different instars or sizes. We'll draw that up until finally that nymph, oh, that one's kind of had a rough day. Do you see those eyes are a little wonky? That happens though. That nymph is so big that it doesn't need to grow anymore. Oh, it's too bad I didn't leave space for this because that nymph, once it's all done growing, we call it the adult. You can say adult. Adult. Yep. So we have the egg, nymph, adult, and that's it for this life cycle. No pupa. No pupa. Because the pupa is the changing room, right? 
These guys didn't need a changing room. They just needed growing, and that worked out just fine. Now, they do the same thing. Once they're adults, then they mix their ingredients with another adult. Some insects don't need to mix ingredients. They can put their ingredient all out on their own. Oh, that's amazing. We'll do an episode on parthenogenesis. Oh, I can't wait. Insects are so interesting, you guys. Can you tell I care about insects a little bit? <laughs> when those adults are ready, they mix ingredients and make a new egg. I should have made the praying mantis egg an oval. I know better. Their eggs are oval, and they put them into an egg case. There's so much to talk about. All right, that's better. That's a better praying mantis. And I know I got to make the ghost, because some of you are saying, don't forget the ghost. So we'll put the ghost mantis. Oh. Thank you, ghost. You did a good job. Were you singing the uh, body part song while I was doing that? I was not singing the body part song. I hope you were doing it for me. All right, friends, speaking of songs, we did the Holo Metabolist song. Hemi Metabolist does a song too. But remember, it's just egg, nymph, adult, and that's it. Are you ready to sing it with me? It goes egg, nymph, adult. That's it. 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 <laughs> Good job. So today's songs were about the two different life cycles that insects have. And it's not like an insect can choose one life cycle or another. You just are what you are. You're either a holo metabolist insect or you're a hemi metabolist insect. Hmm. Now, back to what we were talking about before. Human life cycles, we can't say it's the same kind of thing, but it's sort of similar. Now, it, for humans, are we more holometabolist or hemimetabolist? Do you think you're a larva or a nymph? <laughs> I know, I know. You're a nymph. It's good. It's fun to be a larva, too, though, sometimes. We can imagine. Sometimes we go through life a little bit as a larva and then a pupa and then blossom into an adult. Oh, insects have so much to teach us. All right, friends. I think that we're going to call it for the day. That's our lecture for today. I'm going to have this uh, printable. Or if you don't have a printer, you can do a copy and look or look and copy. If you just look at it, you'll be able to copy it down. I'm not that special of an artist. You can do the same work that I'm doing. Now, I'm really interested in hearing from you. If you have some uh, questions or ideas or things that you find fascinating about insects, find my Facebook page and have somebody write up those questions or ideas in there. I really want to hear from you. I, I miss my classes. My classes always ask me amazing questions. It makes me come up with all sorts of ideas. I have a great crew here, but more, I, more heads are more ideas, and I like more ideas. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Insect Life Cycles, the Holometabolist and Hemimetabolist Development. Mm. All right, we'll be snapping that song all night long. See you, friends. <laughs>